Okay, let's keep the ball rolling by doing another example. In this video, we're going to be trying to tackle this differential equation. The second derivative of y minus 4 times the first derivative of y plus 4y is equal to 0. Now, let's just take a look at this. This is second order, it's linear, it's homogeneous, and it has constant coefficients. So let's just try out this age-old solution, y is equal to e raised to the rt. If we were to plug that in and take the derivatives, we'll recover the characteristic equation r squared minus 4r plus 4 is equal to 0. So we can factor this out and we'll get that r minus 2 times r minus 2 is equal to 0, which means our two roots are just r is equal to 2 and r is equal to 2. So that's interesting. Instead of getting two roots, we have one root just repeated. And as you can imagine, this is what we like to call a repeated root. Now let's see how this impacts the solution to the differential equation. Normally we'd plug in these two values of r and two uh, y is equal to e to the rt and get our two solutions. But if we do that, we get e to the 2t is a solution, and e to the 2t is a solution. Now here's the problem. For a linear second order differential equation, we should get two linearly independent solutions. But here, we pretty much have the same function. Or you could think of it as two linearly dependent solutions. The way we can tell it's linearly dependent is if we were to take a linear combination of the two and set it equal to zero, uh, we need to find non-zero values of C1 and C2 that would make this equation hold to make this function cancel with this function. And that's pretty easy to do. Just C1 is equal to negative C2 is equal to like anything would make these two equations like cancel out. So this is linearly dependent. So essentially, right now, we have at best one solution, e to the 2t. And we need to try and find a second linearly independent solution. But how are we going to do that? Now, what we're going to try and do is we're going to use a technique called the method of uh, reduction of order the method of reduction of order. There we go. And essentially what that method says is we're just going to assume the second solution to this is almost like a modification of the solution. So we're going to assume the second solution has the form u, uh, u as a function of t times e to the 2t. Now we don't actually know what u of t is, but we're going to plug it into this differential equation and hopefully find a value of of like u of t that will satisfy this. So in order to plug it in, let's just take the derivatives ahead of time. And this time, because we have more or less two functions multiplied by each other, we're going to have to keep in mind the chain rule. So the first derivative, that's just going to be, take the derivative of the first part first, u prime uh, times e to the 2t. I'm just going to drop the parentheses t and parentheses because we're going to be writing quite a lot. But first derivative of u times e to the 2t plus u times the derivative of this, which is just e to the 2t times 2. And now we have to take the second derivative, which means we have to take the chain rule for both of these terms. So let's start off here. Derivative of the u part, that's u double prime e to the 2t plus u prime times 2 e to the 2t is 2u prime e to the 2t plus, let's take the derivative of this starting with the u, we get 2u prime e to the 2t plus uh, 2 times u times the derivative of this, which is just 2e to the 2t, which is just 4u e to the 2t. And we can simplify this up by just adding these two terms together and just rewriting as just 4u prime e to the 2t. So now let's plug all these derivatives in this differential equation up here. 
It's going to be fairly long, so just bear with me. It's uh, The differential equation is the second derivative of y, which is just u double prime e to the 2t plus 4 u prime e to the 2t plus 4 u e to the 2t. That's all the second derivative of y. Um, now it's minus 4 times the first derivative. So minus 4 times u prime e to the 2t plus 2u e to the 2t and then plus 4 times y. I'm just going to rewrite that down here. Plus 4 times our y, which is just u e to the 2t. And all of that should be equal to 0. Well, let's try and simplify this up a bit. First of all, notice that there's a e to the 2t in every single term, so let's factor that out. Just e to the 2t times uh, I'll have to say a bracket, this bracketed term is equal to 0. Now let's try and group the inside together and simplify that up uh, by grouping based on these u's. So here we have second derivative of u, u double prime, plus here's a u prime term, here's another u prime term, so just u prime times 4 minus 4, plus u, uh, well here's a u term, here's a u term, Here's a u term, so u times 4 minus 4 times 2, which is minus 8, plus 4, and yeah, we have all of that is equal to 0. Well, we know that 4 minus 4 is just 0, and we know that 4 minus 8 plus 4 is just 0. So we're left with just u prime sorry, u double prime, e to the 2t, is equal to 0. And we know that this exponential function can never actually equal 0, so for this entire thing to equal 0, it has to be because of just the second derivative of u term. So now we want to figure out what u is, so we're just going to have to integrate twice. So let's take the indefinite integral on both sides. If we integrate the left side, we're going to be left with u prime, and if we integrate the right side, we're just going to be left with a constant. Uh, I'm just going to call it c2 for now, for reasons you'll see later. Now let's integrate both sides again. So the integral of the left side, that's just u. The indefinite integral of the right side, that's going to be c2 times t plus c1, uh, another constant of integration. Now... Well, now we figured out what u is. So let's, we said originally that our function was u times e to the 2t, which means that our solution should be, it should be, if we plug that in here, c1 plus c2 t ta, all times e to the 2t. And if we distribute out this exponential term, we get that our two solutions are just c1 e to the 2t, which is what we had originally, plus another term, c2t times e to the 2t. And unlike before, this is a linearly, depend sorry, linearly independent second solution. It's linearly independent because it's an entirely different function since we multiplied it by this independent variable d. So we found our general solution to this original differential equation. Uh, and we found that when you have repeated roots, you're essentially going to find one solution by doing the old-fashioned method, and the other solution will pretty much be the, that same solution, but multiplied by like t. Or if you're working with x's, it's going to be the same solution multiplied by x, or whatever other independent variable. Now let's just check, just to make sure that this is indeed a solution to our original differential equation. So I'm just going to rewrite the original dvq right up here. My prime minus 4y prime plus 4y is equal to 0. And let's just focus on just this term right here. y is equal to t times e to the 2t. 
That means that the derivative is going to be a uh, derivative of t is just 1, so we're just left with e to the 2t plus 2t, e to the 2t. In the second derivative, y double prime, that's just going to be 2e to the 2t plus the derivative of this, which is just going to be 2e to the 2t plus 4t, e to the 2t. And we can just simplify this up by just rewriting this as 4e to the 2t. And if we were to plug all of that into here, we'll get that, uh, let's do ourselves a favor and factor out e to the 2t ahead of time. Uh, if we plug all that in here, we're going to get e to the 2t times second derivative, which is just 4 plus 4t. Minus 4 times the first derivative, which is just, in this case, 1 plus 2t. Plus 4 times y, which is just plus 4t. All of that is equal to 0. Now let's simplify this up a bit by grouping all these terms together. This is the same as e to the 2t times... Uh, here we have plus 4, and here we have minus 4. So 4 minus 4, that just cancels out to be 0. Plus, let's group all the t terms together. Plus 4 minus, sorry, plus 4t minus 8t and plus 4t. And these all group to add together and cancel out to be 0. So we're left with e to the 2t times 0 plus 0, which is indeed 0, and the solution works. So there we have it. This is indeed a second linearly independent solution to this differential equation. We'll talk about more repeated roots with higher order differential equations in the next video.